Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. The enormous toll on families emotionally and financially as Michiganders continue to die from the coronavirus. An expert warning, an unprecedented economic storm lies ahead. Scammers looking to take advantage of you during the coronavirus, preying on your fears and your emotions. We have an important warning tonight, one that could save you money. Information from the Better Business Bureau in my Help Me Hank report. All right, Hank, we got to begin, though, with a different kind of warning, one from the weather. Your eyes were not fooling you. We had snowflakes falling uh, for much of the day. It's again, we'll point out the eighth day of May. Everyone's shaking their heads. It was cold enough for some snow, as you said, Devin, and it's getting colder tonight. Andrew's in for Ben and you are tracking a freeze. That's right. We have Arctic air still overhead. We talked about it yesterday because that's when it arrived. It still remains over place as we go through this evening, tonight and tomorrow morning. In fact, temperatures so low, chances are we will break some records tomorrow morning. Freeze warning in effect for Detroit, nearly all of southeast Michigan as we go from midnight tonight until nine o'clock tomorrow morning. On top of that, yes, we are still seeing some snowflakes out there. Those pictures you saw earlier, that was just this afternoon over in Birmingham. Well, that cell of snow that was over in Birmingham has now traveled farther to the south. It's slightly milder here in Detroit. Milder is a relative term. You're still near our coats, but we have some scattered raindrops and snowflakes right here in Motown itself. Wider scale shows more snow showers still on the way for the rest of this evening. We'll talk about those record low temperatures possible. Your Mother's Day forecast coming up. All right, Andrew, now let's get to today's top coronavirus headlines, beginning with more lives lost in Michigan to the virus. 50 more people died and there are 680 more confirmed cases. We're now at more than 46,000 cases with nearly 4,400 deaths. Big development in Lansing today. Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel said the state's Capitol Commission has the authority already to ban guns inside the Capitol building. The group manages the Capitol grounds. It's made up of Governor Whitmer's appointees and also members of the state House and Senate. That comes after protesters, of course, brought guns into the building during their recent demonstrations. Also today, we learned that Governor Whitmer will go to court May 15th, one week from today, over the legislature's lawsuit challenging her emergency powers. Oral arguments set for next Friday. In Washington, the press secretary for Vice President Mike Pence has tested positive now for the virus. President Trump says the vice president has since been tested and that the results came back negative on him. Uh, most of the nation under stay at home orders for the entire month of April. We're now seeing how many people lost their jobs because of the crisis. The U.S. unemployment rate hit 14.7 percent. That is the highest rate since the Great Depression. In just one month, the rate jumped more than 10 points from the 4.4% that we saw in March. That is more than 20 million jobs lost. Our business editor, Rob Maloney, puts the sudden rate skyrocket into perspective. Perhaps most astounding about this unemployment situation is how quickly we went from first to worst. Back in January, you may recall that the work situation was such that many employers couldn't find enough work for the jobs that they had. And now here we are with most employers shuttered and many not going to reopen. Well, Patrick Anderson of the Anderson Economic Group has been studying this in the state of Michigan, and he calls it nothing short of devastating. We have a depression level unemployment. We have 20% of our workforce out. We have uh, the biggest employer in our state is the state unemployment office. So we have many who haven't earned a dime or even seen a dime in nearly two months. College graduates who thought there was a booming job market to enter and don't have jobs to interview for. And for some, the unemployment benefits exceed their regular take home pay, which leaves them uninterested in returning to whatever job they had that might be reopening for them. We don't have a depression with no unemployment benefits. We have a depression with unemployment benefits that cannot be sustained. And it's warping the way we look at work, and I'm, I'm very concerned about that. Anderson says all of this is leading to many businesses not able to reopen when the time comes. It will also create vast drops in income tax, property tax, and sales taxes for state and local governments, which means that we're staring down an unprecedented economic storm that dwarfs the 2009 downturn. A an issue that we haven't faced at all is how are we gonna have municipal budgets, state parks, state police, 
how are, how are we going to pay for schools next year when the property taxes get hammered? Patrick Anderson's an optimistic guy. He likes to think that we're going to get back our economy, but probably not to the level where it was, he says, for years, and it might even take decades. In West Bloomfield, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Decades. Wow. All right, Rod. Well, not too long ago, this 69-year-old Ramos veteran was on life support battling coronavirus. A few hours ago, he came home from the hospital. Larry Spruill has more on the surprise that was waiting for him. <laughs> Every ribbon tied around these cars represent just a hint of the love Viera Brownlee has for who she calls her bonus dad. He's been in at the Veterans Hospital in Ann Arbor for approximately like 53 days now. Um, it's been a big fight. It's been a struggle. Brownlee is a corporal with Detroit Police Department. Her stepfather is an Army veteran. He's used to beating obstacles, but she says fighting the coronavirus was the battle of his lifetime. He has some complications, um, but he is alive. And uh, right now he has to do rehab because it affects his walking ability. Um, but he is coming home and we are so happy as a family. Lily Craig is beyond grateful. She says it was touch and go for a while for her father. It was terrifying. And when they said that um, he may not make it and when they put him on life support and all this stuff, you know, it, it sent us all into a panic. But, you know, we still had to stay positive. And that positivity worked. Their dad is home. I beat the corona. Yeah! Just want to tell y'all, it's not a joke. For those who think it's a joke, be serious about this. This ain't nothing to play with. And if this celebration wasn't good news enough, the family tells me that Mr. Andrew tested negative when he left the hospital, and he will be just fine. Reporting in Romulus, Larry Spruill, Local 4. That was a long road. Great to see those uh, all those smiles though today. Most definitely. Well, there are old scams, but now with a COVID twist. Scammers using the coronavirus to prey on our emotions, targeting our grandparents and even our pets. This is horrible. The Better Business Bureau saying tonight that they have already received dozens of complaints from people in our area. Consumer investigator Hank Winchester has what to look out for in this Help Me Hank report. Metro Detroiters unfortunately being targeted right now with these scams. Now, I've told you about these scams before, but now there is a new twist, one that is connected to COVID-19. Pet sales are booming. Many of us trapped at home looking for companionship, ads all over the internet. And while some breeders are legit, some are trying to take advantage of you during this pandemic. Here's Laura Blankenship with the Better Business Bureau. It's the same scam as normal. You know, the person already purchases the animal. Then, of course, they get an email that says there's additional fees with the shipping of the animal. Well, now they're saying because of COVID, there's additional fees for extra precautions taken with the animal. The scammers telling those looking for a dog that the animal may need special treatment or a protective crate to prevent the dog from contracting the coronavirus. These are scams, and in some cases, people have been paying more than $1,000 on top of the cost of the dog. Especially since it's been proven that animals can contract the virus. So they're saying because of that, there's additional fees to make sure that the pet is healthy, as well as additional fees to get the pet to Michigan. The other big old new scam, the grandparent scam. Now in this case, the scammers targeting an elderly victim, sharing a story saying that they have COVID-19, that the grandchild or family members in the hospital. They can't be visited, but please wire money because the treatments are expensive. And with that grandparent scam, unfortunately, um, it's an emergency. They're saying there's an emergency. I need you to send money right away. Um, and of course, they're asking for it. Um, they're giving that pressure. So there's no time to check whether or not the person is actually in the hospital. I'll put more information regarding these scams. And also, you can track all the scams happening right now in Metro Detroit. Some of them are COVID-19 related. You'll find what you need to know right on the Help Me Hank page at clickondetroit.com. I'm Hank Winchester. Help Me Hank. All right, Hank. Consumers Energy has agreed to pay a $10,000 fine after the fire that forced people to lower their heat during last year's polar vortex. State officials determined grounding interference at the Ray Compressor Station in Macomb County led to the fire. 
Those cold temperatures and high winds did not disperse natural gas into the air as part of a blowdown procedure. But the station has been modified as part of repairs to bring it back into service online. This colder weather not just having an impact on our moods, it is also threatening crops once again across Michigan. The Westview Orchard in Washington Township is going to great lengths to save strawberries from the weekend freeze. Kim DiGiulio shows us the action underway to keep the weather from ruining the fruit. With these unseasonably cool temperatures we're experiencing right now, local farms could be in trouble. Not to mention they're already struggling figuring out how to get people to come to the farm this summer in this era of social distancing. So I am hopeful. Um, you know, and I look out and I see a lot of, a lot of <laughs> handwork and people sweating blood and their hearts helping us to continue growing some of the best fruit. Here at Westview Orchards in Washington Township, the farmers are gearing up for a cold weekend, which could potentially damage all of their fruit crops. The flower trusses are out of the strawberry plants. Uh, the cherries and the peaches are both in bloom. And the apples are in what we call pink or pre-bloom time. All of which could die, which would be a big hit to this 207-year-old farm. If you don't have a crop, the people don't come out, you don't sell the donuts, they don't have the fun, you don't employ people. So there's that trickle-down kind of effect. So it affects our community as a whole because that's where we have our pool of employees and staff. This farm is also dealing with how to run their you pick farm when the state reopens. Um, we're thinking about, OK, how can we during this time period, social distance, we're thinking about using reservations to come out and pick strawberries if we're able to. The family farmers say they're hopeful the weather this weekend doesn't impact what could be a great socially distant outdoor activity this summer. Now, just a reminder for those of you at home who have your own crops, you're going to want to bring those inside for the weekend, or if they can't come inside, make sure to cover them with a blanket. I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. Yeah,